Welcome to my vlog or my YouTube channel, whatever you want to call it. I'm back on a new channel after being deleted from my old one. I have no idea why that happened. Apparently I broke the terms and conditions, but I don't know how. Anyway, that was a few months ago. I was really on a roll with it. I was really enjoying it. So took the wind out of my sails a little bit, but I'm back. So I am denied to whether I would start a new one. That's quite a volatile situation where you're investing all this time and effort and you're trying to build something and then they just erase it with no explanation. You know, and especially because I did not break any terms and conditions, I can promise you that. So I thought, you know, do I really want to invest all this time again on a platform that might just erase me in a year's time? But anyway, I've decided to give it a try anyway. I had a lot of good feedback from it from my clients and people I've worked with in the past. So obviously I didn't reach like a wide audience or anything, which was never really the point. The point is just to get longer form content together because when you've been in, a, in an industry for like 20 years and you've been through all the life experiences that I've been through, it's really hard to explain in short form content like a reel or a, um, an Instagram post or something, anything in much detail. So, and it's really hard to get to the bottom of something. So I found this form really easy and then I could share kind of recipes and just how I put my meals together and just all these kinds of things. So I was constantly getting feedback about how helpful it was. So that's why I'm back. I am probably going to start a podcast. So I'm not sure if I'll be doing this weekly or intermittently. I'm not sure. I'm going to try both and see how we go. So just make sure if you actually like this and get a lot out of it that you let me know just so that, you know, the more feedback I get, the easier it is for me to know where to direct my time. So video format takes a lot longer to edit, you know, just make sure it's all seamless and nice and not boring to watch, I guess. So what will be on the channel is just any tips relating to women's health and well-being. Be mindset, hormones, uh, weight loss, nutrition, training, meditation, energetics, anything personal development related, trauma, like all these kind of things. So I like to talk about anything that hinders a woman's physiology and mental and emotional health in any way. So that's kind of my jam. And I have a rebrand coming up. So very soon, probably... I'm going to say max six weeks from now, I'm going to be rebranding and launching my new business, which I've been working on on the side. So I'll make a whole video for that though. So I won't tell you much about that now. So that's kind of what's coming. So what's in this video is just really simple, short and sweet. I just showed you a bit of my meal prep, like where I'm at at the moment, where I'm working at the moment, gave you a little tour through there. A little bit on Louis Simmons who passed away. It was one month ago. I state in the video that it was a week ago, but that's because I filmed it about a month ago and then have been so busy I just didn't get it together. So ignore the one week, it was one month ago. And that's about it for this video. So and just a short disclaimer, as I was just editing the footage, my skin is really bad and I just feel like I have to highlight that because I was trying a much higher fat diet back then because I'm having a few issues like digesting carbs. I've always had an issue with it. And I thought because I was leaner that I might be able to get away with more, but no, I could not. So yeah, I was playing around a bit with my diet and then that really impacted my gut and my skin. And I was also playing around with increasing probiotics because my gut health has been not the best since I was a small child. So yeah, it looks like not the best and I almost didn't want to post the video just because of that, but then that's not me. So I never do that kind of thing. I don't wear makeup at work, even if my skin's not great, and I'm always playing around with my diet trying to work out like what's the best way to eat for me. Don't even know why I feel like I have to explain that, but I am. So yeah, that's it. I'll just see you on the other side of the video. Just finished my meal prep. I got back from holidays two days ago and I was at a lunch all day yesterday. So first thing I did yesterday morning was prep my food and I just went to the gym. So just trying to get on top of some work, which has just been really hectic. Yeah, so I'll show you what I prepped. Here's my meal prep for the week. Well, it's just for today through Thursday. So this is four days of food. So I've got, I'm having beef mince, which is just with spices, salt and pepper. And I'm having that with my sweet potato and some broccoli. So that's four servings. And then I've got this like pumpkin chicken situation, with red onion and spinach. And I'm having that with some rice. And then I've got, it's like bolognese sauce with black olives and chicken. And I'm having that with an egg and some green beans. And then I've got these little turkey blueberry patties here. And I also have some tuna that are going on rice cakes with avocado. So yeah, that's my food prep for this week. Can't wait to get stuck into it. So 
So officially I want to start prep. So my plan is to compete in season B and it will be the last time I ever compete. I'm still not sure like how it's going to go. If my body doesn't respond, you know, I'm not going to do it. I'm also not going to do it at the expense of my cycle just because I have other things to consider moving into being 39 next month. So yeah, I'd absolutely love to do it. I still have the same dream goal of doing the WBFF. I have the bikini for it. I've already got my gown and just need to get the body. So at the moment, my stomach just feels really raw and I'm really puffy just from being on holiday. So I ate probably a lot more food than normal, still the same type of food. But yeah, I feel like I put on weight and I just haven't checked yet. So I thought I'll just go a few days eating a lot lighter, sort of cleaner, more plain foods, the way I would normally eat and just see where I'm at and then go from there. So I'll keep you updated if it's something I'm definitely gonna go through with. And I'll obviously create a video log of that process moving forward. So a bit of sad news in the industry this last week was that Louis Simmons, he passed away. So Louis Simmons is one of those people who has been in the fitness industry forever. He's a pioneer, absolutely. And so many things that you would have been doing in the gym if you've been training for a while would actually tie right back into Louis Simmons and what he brought to the world. So what he actually did was he started his own gym, which essentially is a powerlifting gym. It's called Westside Barbell and it's in Ohio in the United States. And within that gym, he basically just trains like super hardcore powerlifters. So we don't need to, as women, I guess, we don't need to take from him directly what he does because we're not doing things like bands and chains and um, lifting to our max potential and things like that. But he does bring to light some very fundamental philosophies that are important in training now, such as strengthening the posterior chain, how to load your nervous system correctly. Like, so he uses a lot of methodologies that kind of overload the nervous system to prepare it for heavy weights, but also systems where they might back it off a little bit in order to not overload it. So they do a lot of fluctuations in their training methods like they have speed days and strength days and max effort days and things like that that doesn't really benefit you directly but what does benefit you directly is the equipment that is brought into the world that we as women can benefit absolutely from so luckily with the gym i'm working in now we have access to some of those pieces of equipment or at least the newer versions of them so i'll show you what they are uh, and then i'll show you what they do so this is just the safety squat bar you kind of sit up on it and it um, puts the weight more forward of the body that's obviously a verve version of it because it's pretty mainstream now but then we have a belt squat so this is also Louis Simmons creation so that's just like you can do squats stead lifts marching all sorts of exercises but you have the weight around your waist here with the belt um, then we have a glute ham race this is my favorite so for every girl I ever train I have the goal of helping her do one of these so it's entirely glute and hamstring based and super difficult that's a glute ham raise. And then we have, lastly, a reverse hyper. So this is just a little pack away version. But let's see here, the name. It's just a little mobile version, but there's a really big version you can do. Yeah, it just really helps to re decompress and then strengthen up the lower back or erector spine. These are just little things that Louis Simmons brought into the training world um, that you may not have realized. And he also brought about the box squat, which is exactly what I use um, to teach my clients how to barbell squat. So this piece of equipment that I'm gonna show you is the glute hamstring raise or glute ham raise. So what it does is it really forces you to lock in through your abdominals and your posterior chain and actually just pull yourself up through just your hamstrings. So it's almost like a laying leg curl, but you're actually pulling your whole body up with your hamstrings rather than lying down supported. So this is my number one favorite thing to teach a woman to do. So when I first meet her, I think what I wanna do is get her body to be ready to be able to do this exercise well. So they might not know it, but I get really excited when they can do it. So I'll show you what it looks like. So this one is a reverse hyper. So it's for overloading the erector spinae or like your lower back muscles. And it's just like a miniature version. So it's not so much of a dynamic movement as the original one he invented is, but this one is a little bit more controlled, but it uses the same muscles. So I'll show you what it does. So, like, so, so you're pretty much just squeezing your abs and you're just able to lift up through here and through your lower back. So 
Very cool. So the stronger the lower back, then the more you're going to be able to handle um, heavy weights from your spine. So the stronger you're going to get. Then we've got this safety spot bar. So what it does is just load the weight forward of the body. So it puts a little bit less strain on the upper back by holding it back. So instead you can just support it through the front. So this one really overloads your abdominals. It makes it a little bit uh, more important for you to stabilize through here. And you can actually stay a little bit more upright. That's how it looks. As you see, you're holding it supported here. And if I had weights on, they'd actually be in a different position than if they were on my back. And then lastly, we have the belt squat machine. So basically it just loads the weight up through your hips rather than your spine. So it's not so hard on the nervous system. And I guess you could say it's somewhere between like a leg press and a barbell squat. So I'll show you how that one works. So yeah, those are my favorite exercises brought about by Louis Simmons. We have that and the box squat. So I don't have a box here to show you. My box is at home in the garage. The one thing I thought I might include in some of my videos is just like what I'm reading at the moment because I basically I read, I'm going to say about probably a book a week and you know two weeks at max. Um, if you're on my newsletter you'll see like my little reviews of my books but I am building a bit of an archive of book summaries and book reviews. Not so much reviews but reflections and what I learned from them and my assistant's been helping me um, take stock of all these notes because it's just insane like my bookshelf is just if you can see like that's not even that's like half my books so I've just been going through them all so what I usually do when I read is I highlight um, and then I send that to my assistant and she types them out and what I want to do is make little videos talking about what's in it so I thought I'll just put it in this one and then people can give me feedback as to whether they think it's any use or not so last week I went on a trauma healing retreat. So trauma being a really scary word, everyone goes, oh my gosh, I don't wanna talk about that. Shame, shame, shame. But all trauma is, is like an incident that impacted you emotionally at some point in your life with no resolution. So for somebody, it could be like being left in the supermarket when you're five years old and nobody explains to you what happened or apologizes or you don't receive love from and comfort from your mom when she picks you up. You know, it could be something like that, like an unresolved issue. It could be something really horrendous, you know, like going to war or, you know, being cheated on and abandoned, or it could be like your parent leaving you or all sorts of stuff. Anyway, so I went on a retreat to work through some of mine. So before I went, I was reading these books. So I read these two books because I always like to kind of do a bit of research before I go through a process to see or to make sure I can make the most of that process. Because the more you understand in here, the more change you can get in the body. So trauma stored in the body, you don't always mentally know what it is, but then it kind of dictates all of our lives. Anyway, so these are the two books I read. So this one just being Trauma by Paul Conti. And then this one, it doesn't start with you or it didn't start with you. So this one's about generational trauma and how you can carry that into your own life. And then this one's just like a general overview of trauma. Anyway, so I just want to highlight this wondrous quote that I have in here, which just, I've been thinking about it so much. And people used to always say to me things like, you're so tough, you know, and I used to go, oh, that's because I had, you know, in my head, I think this, that's because I had a really hard go when I was younger and, you know, struggled with a lot of things and I've overcome them and that's why I'm so strong. But then I think about it, well, how come other people have, you know, had really bad experiences um, and can't get their self together, you know, like is resilience an inborn trait or is that something that you acquire through hardship? And I talk about this with my clients all the time. So we're always, we're always pondering on stuff. So I always kind of thought, I'm so glad rubbish things happened to me because I'm stronger because of that. And that's why I have all these really great things or things that I think are really great in my life now because I went through all this hard stuff. Anyway, then I read this line in this book and it completely ruined my reality around that. So it says, <laughs> it says, it is not true that what does not kill us makes us stronger. What doesn't kill us can actually leave us with wounds that make life a lot more difficult. That being said, what doesn't kill us can make us wiser, more grateful and more compassionate. And I think that's probably much more true. So trauma can completely ruin your life. It can end your life really um, if you don't take care of it because it can cause all these illnesses. That's why I'm trying to heal mine because I want to heal my gut. I want to have, you know, not this little voice in my head that sometimes tells me not to put myself out there when I want to and a lot more stuff that we won't go into, but fascinating, right? So trauma 
ruins your life unless you fix it. If you've got anything bubbling away under the surface there, then it could be a super powerful thing for you to start looking into that because yeah, you don't want to look back, you know, when you're 60 or 70 and think like, I didn't go to that place. I didn't do that job. I didn't start that business. I didn't buy that house. I didn't call that friend. I didn't chase that dream because trauma in your nervous system stopped you. Yeah. So, and I don't want to live a life like that. Like at this, one of my philosophies in life is I really want to really reach what I believe is my highest potential. I know that I'll never reach my highest potential. No one ever can because your potential is limitless. But what I want is to feel free. I want to feel free from the chains of the fear of reaching my potential, if that makes sense. So yeah, anyway, let me know if you're interested in any type of content like that. That's all I have for this video. Um, just wanted to get the ball rolling again and get some momentum. So just make sure that you like and subscribe if you want to follow in the future. I'll probably have a comp prep series because I think I'm going to be competing in season B. It's all a little bit up in the air, but I'll keep you updated on everything that's going on. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.